Got the engine in front of the Denali. I've raised it off the ground to engine installation position. It's got the front tires four inches off the ground. I'll go ahead and pop the wheels off of it on the front. And run a jack underneath the transmission pan with a board on top of it to spread the load out on the transmission pan so I can maneuver it around when the engine goes down in there. And I've already ground the manifold pretty clean. Both of them ready for a gasket. I may take a razor blade and scrape the aluminum bell housing off before the engine mounts to it. Some gristle on it. Particularly the dowel pins. I'm going to grease the dowel pins too. Not that I'll be back in here with any luck. Before I even look like I'm going to approach this with an engine, I want to make sure that torque converter is all the way back in the bell housing. The pump tab sh should be at least an inch back from the mounting surface of the bell housing maybe an inch and a half so there's not a problem there and make sure to take care of any details on the manifold last chance and if the starter is out of the way and the air conditioning compressor is out of the way I have to pick this stuff back up move it out of the way and of course the engine harness is going to be in the way a little bit I have to fish it around the engine as it goes down in there. And watch these wire harnesses. Make sure they don't get smashed by something. Knock sensor and crank sensor and more knock sensor. Pick the alternator back up to its former position. And the dipstick's in place. Close enough. And the torque converter is back. Looks like that lower ear is about middle ways of that inspection hole down there. I'm going to wipe some of those uh, sand debris out of the belt housing from grinding the rust and scale off this manifold. And settle some other stuff down. I took an air hose and blew all those sand and metal particles out of the manifold ports and the bell housing. And cleaned up a spot for the engine mounts to lay on so they're not sitting on a bunch of grime. I went into the inner fender and picked the downpipe donut gasket out. And Be installing it with a new one. This, this is just a ring. Now's the time to do it. Looks like a big enough hole now. All I have to do is take the hood hinges back loose, prop the hood up. And start working on it. And everything's out of the way. I got a nice spot opened up. Hopefully, it won't have to fool with the harness too much. The manifold's pulled back and raised up. If that doesn't give you the willies, nothing will. Stay out from underneath these things when they're like this. Good way to get killed. It's going to be ultra hard to put it in with the dampener on it. I 
I'm going to have to stand the motor straight up and down to get in there with that dampener on it. We'll take the radiator and the radiator support out. It's the old plate. I'll try to stand him up and do the other routes I have to get down in there. Getting pretty close to where the mounts line up to the frame. And the bell housing is starting to close in. I'll slide it back, put a little positive pressure against the bell housing, and lower it down until the dowel pins drop in with any luck. I've spun the crank around and aligned the paint mark up with the mark on the torque converter. So it should be home free when it goes together. Should be close to the original mark. This is the passenger side view. I will. Nothing busted yet. Watch them plug ins from get caught in the engine mount. Or between the oil pan and the rear end or something. Might go in there and have a little look around. I'll tell you, just pretty much let the motor on down into the saddles on the frame and this, this thing's about stuck itself together. I'll let the transmission jack down a little bit and that should bring the ass of the motor down with it to close up that top. Better than textbook. So let me see what happens when I undo the transmission jack. Just like downtown. I've got pretty much all the load off the engine puller. That's good enough to get some bolts started in. Probably jiggled around and going together. Piece of cake. If the bell housings fell together, then the torque converter should be alright and not bound up. If it was checked, it, it won't be anyway. So, might as well get the chains off of it. We won't need the engine puller anymore. These front mounts are self centering pretty much. And you can twist it around with a big screwdriver or something if, if it doesn't line up just right. I'll get these chains off and I'll snug down a couple of the bell housing bolts on the top like where those lines bolt back on then go on the bottom and put a couple bolts in the oil pan or the lower bell housing then come back up here and the bell housing bolts tighten down to just about 40 foot pounds be fine and keep your intake ports covered up so nothing ends up in them tape would be good. person might be ahead to install the dampener after it's down in there. I had to slip the radiator out to get the motor down in there with that on there. It was close, but it went. But the radiator wasn't being held down really any, anyway. Just had to unclip the transmission lines. Now that all the bell housing bolts are in, all the T 
tube and hanger brackets. The dipstick tube is fastened back on. I'm going to go ahead and put the torque converter bolts in. One of them, the mark that I put on the flywheel and the torque converter is already lined up. I'm going to wire brush off these bolts and put blue Loctite on them and install them to 50 foot pounds. Wire brush turns the old Loctite from that into that. make sure things don't get complicated under there. I run each torque converter bolt down until it just touches the flywheel but the torque converter can still move in the slots. Get all three of them put in until they're just a little bit of slack under the heads of them and then go around and tighten them all three down to 50 foot pounds otherwise if you tighten them down one at a time the slot may not be lined up for one of the other ones and you just have to backtrack and start over again. Another general idea about putting them all three in, just easing them down, is you can draw the torque converter forward or it can get in a bind and, and kind of jam if you don't bring it into the flywheel pretty evenly all the way around. Just kind of load one down, move to the next one, load it down but not not where it's tight just so it'll draw the torque converter up to the flywheel that's a really nice spot and you can reach in to this inspection hole and feel the torque converter swapping around let's take a screwdriver in there Turn the flywheel as needed to the next hole and get it started and run it almost down. You gotta be sure once you get them in there, or they'll, if you leave them sticking out too far, they can get caught up in something in the bell housing. You can use like a midwell socket. And let the block be a natural stopper while you tighten it. Or you can use a six point wrench on it with a backup of a 19 or 21 and stick a screwdriver into the flywheel and hold it. Either way will work. Let's get them tight. As far as rotating a flywheel, you, if you have an assailant, I mean a assistant, they can turn the crankshaft up in front with a 24 millimeter socket to where you need it. Just keep the socket on there square and remember the Loctite setting up, so get on it. Once you've done all three, you can go ahead and stick your inspection cover plug back in and I left this oil pan bolt loose on the passenger side that retains the transmission lines so I can get a little play in them to, to work with this hole over here. I'll go ahead and put it in, plug the crank sensor and knock sensor in, put the starter on and put the plastic cover back in on the, this side. And you can put it on the other side too. Bell housing bolts are all in. Be advised before putting the passenger side inspection plastic cover on, just leave it loose and run the starter through it. Tighten the starter up and then tighten a 10 millimeter bolt to it. This is for the driver's side, it's just a little chunk. But uh, the starter side has a hole through it. And the starter's got to pass through it and then you can't get it through it necessarily 
while it's fastened down, so it'll be a time saver. And I hopefully not tear up the crank sensor wire doing it, getting the starter back in there. I've got the knock sensors plugged in. I'm going to go ahead and put the driver's side three engine mount bolts to the frame. These are supposed to tighten about 55 foot-pounds. And I'll go ahead and put this ground strap on the stud down there. If it's not going to pull on the harness too much, pull this pair of steering alternator bracket still sitting on them. I need to go underneath and start routing this cam actuator wires and cam position sensor wires around their respectable bolts. And fasten the harness back to the front of the wall pan. And get the air conditioner mounted. I, I left the one bolt in the back on the bottom installed because it's kind of a pain to get it out of there with the motor in place. And I'll probably go ahead and raise the manifolds up into their place and work on the passenger side engine mount bolts. New downpipe o rings installed for the, the uh, I guess they're calling it a donut gasket. The old one will not seal again, so it'll need a new one. And feel free to mount this metal, I call it an intake stopper, but it may have been designed to suppress some type of noise or something where it's cut. Back on the back of the head and the ground strip back there. Both mounts are down. And the air conditioner is mounted. Starter's on. The rounds hooked up down there. And the knock sensor harness is on top of the stud sticking off the ground. I'm going to go ahead and run the manifold. This will be an opportune time to stick new manifold bolts in it if you need to. I put a stud in the back one because it was broken off. And a little scabby coming out. I had to re-tap it. Use a new manifold gasket. The bolts tighten the 12 foot pounds. Once that side's mounted, the other side's already in position to have it done. Drop the gasket in and go. If you're using aftermarket gaskets, pay attention. There's usually a manifold side road on the gasket. Should point toward the manifold. Feel free to install the spark plugs any time after the manifolds are bolted down. Even without much engine in there, that number eight's still a Lulu. Still a doozy. Mine are already in. I'm a little tired of climbing around on this thing like a jungle gym, so I'm going to work up front here a little bit. Put the air conditioner tensioner pulley back on. And the words the AC belt. Still got the water pump and this accessory bracket to put on. And the coil packs, some intake. Get a little... Put a little radiator back in it. It really is easier to work on with radiator out of the way, actually. It's an opportune time to change that tensioner pulley. They go bad all the time around the 100,000 and or the belt. Remember, start, put a mark on the belt, reusing it, crank forward. So put it back on the direction it came off. 
starting to come together. The starter bolts are 40 foot pounds offhand. While I'm chilling a little bit, I think I'll go ahead and mount the water pump on there so I can get these hoses back in their rightful places and uh, get the intake set on. So I don't have to crawl over that thing, that bracket to put it on about last. And the water pump's got a lot better access without that in the way. And without the intake hovering over it. Mouse over the video and hit the circle I to continue to part two of the video.